If you're looking to build any meaningful generative AI enterprise application, then you need to augment the output of the large language model with data from the internal data source using Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. But before you can use the RAG process, you need to build a data ingestion pipeline. And for that, you need to have a clear understanding of some of the key terms such as vectors, vector embeddings, embedding models, vector store, similarity search, cosine similarity, and KNN algorithm. So in this video, I'm going to explain all these terms in a very simple, understandable fashion. And this video is part of my best-selling Udemy course on Amazon Bedrock and Generative AI, which you can check from the link below. You can also check out my some other videos as part of this playlist, which includes building a chatbot, HR, Q&A application using RAG, text summarization, code generation, and some others. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the video. These are all the key terms that we're going to cover as part of this lecture. So, why do we need vectors? Okay, say you go to a retail store and you buy some apples and some books and then you go to the cashier and pay for these items. Now, it's very easy for cashier to calculate the amount you have to pay because you can store the products and their prices in a relational database because it's all structured data. But now let's say you're watching Instagram and you see this beautiful wall clock, but you want a wall clock with a different color. So now how are you going to find a similar image but with black color? And that's something we're going to explore in next few slides on how we can do the image search or search data when it's in the unstructured form. Okay, now let's understand what are vectors. So first we'll just go through a definition. So vectors are basically mathematical representation of words sentences and documents so what does that mean so it means that words sentences or documents can be expressed as a list of numbers or sequence of numbers okay now let's take an example say you have a word apple and you want to represent it as a vector so basically you are going to try and represent it as i said a list of numbers now to represent this apple as a vector it can have hundreds and thousands of dimension but just for the understanding purpose let's say that we just look at two dimensions so we say is it a fruit if it's a fruit then we say one if it's not a fruit then we say minus one and then we look at the cost per apple and say the cost of apple is four dollars okay now we can represent these dimensions as a list of numbers so we say apple and we represent it as one comma four now we can also plot it in a two-dimensional space so we say okay is it a fruit on y-axis and it's one so we plot it here and the cost of apple is four dollars so it's here so it will fit somewhere here in the two-dimensional space now let's say we have a banana and we use the same dimensions and we say is it a fruit yes and what's the cost it's two dollars so we represent it as a list of numbers say one because it's a fruit and cost is two dollars so you say one comma two we plot it on the number line again and because it's two cost is two and it's a fruit so it will be somewhere here and then apple would be somewhere here now let's try and represent some other objects as vectors say we have a football and we say is it a fruit no it's not a fruit so we say it's minus one price is fifty dollars we represent it as minus one and fifty and then just plot it on the graph and it will be somewhere here because minus one and then the cost is around fifty dollars so that's how you can represent a football now if you represent a vector as a tennis racket so again we say minus one and price is what so it'll be minus one comma forty and it will fit in somewhere here Okay, now just for the simplification purpose, we represented each of these objects as vectors, but in two dimensional space. But in the real world, each word or sentence or documents can be represented in hundreds and thousands of dimensions. Now let's see how we can represent it 
using some of the machine learning models from AWS. Now to convert these words or sentences into vectors, we use something known as embedding models, which can convert these words into vectors with hundreds and thousands of dimensions. Now let's take an example. So let's say we have these different words, apple, banana, grapes, and some others, and then we pass it through an embedding model. So AWS provides Amazon Titan embeddings model to convert words or sentences or documents into vectors. So when we pass these words through the embedding model, then it will convert these words into various vectors. And Amazon Titan embedding model converts these words or sentences across 1536 dimensions. So in the previous slide, we converted it in two dimensions, but it converts into 1536 dimensions. Okay, and then just from the visualization perspective, I know it's a two dimension, not a 1536 dimensional view, but you can see we have fruits here and then sports equipment would be clubbed together based on similarity of the dimensions. Now I've just included this Go word here as well. So Go is a popular board game, very similar to chess, but it's also a programming language. Now, one thing we need to understand when we say go, will it go to the sports equipment or the programming language here? The critical thing to understand here is that the embedding model would not convert the word or sentence just based on the keyword, but it will look at the meaning and context of that word to club it with similar objects. So we'll take a look at that in a little more detail in future slides. But one thing for now you need to understand is that these embedding models can create word embeddings, it can create sentence embedding as well as document embeddings. Okay, so here is an output from the embedding model. Now say you want to convert a fruit into a vector and you pass it through the Amazon Titan embedding model and these are the dimensions you will see so these are about 100 and then there are 1436 more items so it will be converted along 1536 dimensions okay the next concept that we'll learn is called as text splitting or data chunking so what it means is say you have a pdf document and which is several pages long and you want to convert it into a vector then what you do is you do text splitting or data chunking. You can split the data into fixed number of characters or you can split it by token or code. So now let's assume you want to split it by characters. So you say we split the document into fixed characters of around 200. And then for those 200 characters, you will pass through the Amazon Titan embedding model and then convert it into a vector. Okay, next thing we need to know is vector store now in the previous few slide we said okay we have these words and we pass it through the amazon titan embedding model we convert it into vectors of 1536 dimensions now the question is where do we store these vectors and you can have thousands and millions of these vectors in a real world application so for that what you do is you store these in a vector store or vector database and there are a lot of them so you have facebook ai similarity search or pine cone chroma db while as facebook ai similarity search is a library that's provided by facebook but pine cone and chroma db are more conventional vector store databases that persist all the vectors that you have created through the embeddings Okay, next on the list is vector search. So now that you have stored the vectors in the vector DB, you will need to run some kind of a similarity search. Now let's see how this process works. Now say we have a user who posts a question, which programming language is similar to Go? Now what's going to happen is, so you're going to pass this question through the Amazon Titan embedding model and that's going to convert it into a vector embedding. Now, if we go to the graph that we had earlier, where we had segregated based on the fruits and dimensions 
or sports equipment or programming language now just imagine that if we were just doing a keyword search and you have the go here then it could have either search in this sports equipment because we have the go board game but it could also have searched in the programming language because there's a programming language called as go but now this is not doing a keyword search but it's doing more semantic search which means that it is looking at the context and intent of this question and then based on that it will look for similarity and in this case because the go programming language would have similar dimensions to maybe python so it's probably going to retrieve this answer then the go board game so now let's understand what kind of algorithms we use for vector search so one of the ways to do similarity search is using cosine similarity now let's understand what is cosine similarity so if you remember from high school basically this cosine theta is a combination of this distance adjacent divided by hypotenuse so that's how you get the value of cosine theta now with that understanding cosine distance matrix is used to find similarities between different vectors so how does it do it the cosine matrix measures the degree of angle between two vectors okay now let's understand that so i've taken the 2d example that we had seen earlier now you can see we have the banana plotted here and the angle it makes is about 30 degrees and for the apple the angle is about 45 degrees and the difference between the two is about 15 degrees and we know that cos theta is 1 and cos 90 is 0 and cos 180 has a value of minus 1. If you don't know how this cos 0 is equal to 1 comes you can just do a little bit of google. Now you can see here the angle between the two vectors is 15 degrees so cos 0 is 1 and cos 90 is 0 so the value of this cos 15 would be around 0 0.96 so what the cosine similarity says is if the cosine value is 1 the vectors are pointing in the same direction that means they are absolutely similar so if apple was here and we sub superimposed another vector on top of this then it will be very similar to apple but in our case it's about 15 degrees so it's 0 0.96 that means it's not absolutely similar but it's very similar still but now let's take the example of this programming language go and it makes an angle of 135 degrees and if you see apple it makes a angle of 45 degrees and if you just subtract 135 minus 45 so you get an angle of about 90 degrees and if you see here cos 90 is 0 which means if you get a cosine value of 0 so you can see cos 90 and the angle between them is 90 degrees so the value will be 0 if the cosine value is 0 that means vectors are unrelated and which is true because you have the apple and go program language they are absolutely different so there is very little similarity between the two now if you have the value as minus 1 that means they are absolutely in opposite directions so that's how it measures the similarity between different vectors depending on the angle they make between each other hope you have got an idea on how similarity search works so there is another popular algorithm called as k nearest neighbor algorithm that can use cosine similarity or some other matrix to to determine the similarity of different vectors so knn is basically a supervised machine learning algorithm that is great at classification and regression tasks so in the initial few lectures we learned about classification and regression how does it work basically say you have a new item here or a new vector and there are already two clusters you have the stars and a triangle now you provide the value of k so it can be the 3 or 7 or whatever you want so what it does is so it creates a cosine angle with all the existing vectors and then determines 
the closest neighbors so depending on the value of k it will determine which are the three nearest neighbors for this particular item and let's say it identifies these three and then these three are going to vote whether it belongs to a triangle or a square and if you determine k is equal to 7 then there will be seven items that are closest to it that will determine and vote whether it belongs to a triangle or a star so krn is a great algorithm for similarity search but the problem with this algorithm is that it will measure the angle with each of the items that you have in the vector db which might not help with the performance so instead of the k nearest neighbor you use the ann which is approximate nearest neighbor and this is much faster than the knn algorithm and sometimes you use this for similarity search so i hope now you have clarity of all these key terms that we have discussed i hope you like this lecture i'll see you in the next lecture